Happy St. Patrick's Day! As a proud Irishman, I love to celebrate St. Patrick's Day and this year I'm going all out because I'll be teaming up with YouTubers across the world. We'll be cooking recipes from Ireland's wonderful food heritage, tasting treats from the land of leprechaun and of course proving to you that we don't just eat potatoes. Today for my big St. Patrick's Day collaboration, I am teaming up with Sarah Lynn from The Domestic Geek who has a channel jam-packed full of great healthy eating recipe ideas. As part of the collaboration, we're both cooking up our favourite Irish recipes. So let's head over to Sarah Lynn and find out what she's cooking up for us today. Hi Donal, I am so thrilled to be taking part in your St. Patrick's Day celebration. For my part in this collaboration, I am going to be whipping up some way over the top chocolate stout cupcakes with Irish cream frosting. How festive do those sound? The only real challenge with making these cupcakes is getting them done before you drink all the stout. I can't wait to see what you're whipping up in your kitchen. Happy St. Patrick's Day. How good does that recipe look? I hope that you give it a go. So while Sarah Lynn is making up her Irish inspired recipe, I'm gonna show you how to make the most beautiful Irish cheddar and potato yeast rolls. They are so delicious, light and moist. And as you know, Irish people love their potatoes. So this is a great reason to get them involved in a recipe like this. It starts off in a bowl by sifting some plain or strong bread flour going in here. So. This will just make sure that you've got no lumps going on and you've got lots of light air running through the flour. It really makes a light potato yeast roll. So in with your strong bread flour, I'm gonna add in, quite unusually, some cold butter. And the interesting thing about this method is that you get in there with your fingertips and just press the flour into the butter until you kind of have almost what you would do with pastry. So you're kind of getting a, like a rough crumbly mixture. As soon as you've rubbed that butter and flour mixture, it should look just like this. Very, very nice, very, very smooth. And now I'm gonna mix through this a little bit of caster sugar. And to give it that wonderful rise, I've got some active dry yeast going in here. Give that a really good mix through. And our last little ingredient to go in here and get mixed through is some mashed potato. It sounds like a strange ingredient, but it results in the most beautiful, moist, and light and airy yeast rolls you will ever make. So some mashed potato goes in. And it's a great little ingredient to add if you have any leftover in the house. Give that a really good mix through just to ensure that it's nicely combined. And now it's time to get in there with our wet ingredients. So I have some milk, which is just ever so slightly warm. And you do need that warmth involved here because it's going to activate the yeast that's in our dry ingredients. So milk goes in. And I'm also going to add in the water which I cooked my potatoes in. There's lots of starch in that water and it's going to help to make our wonderful yeast rolls rise. So a good bit of that potato water goes in and then it's time to get your hands involved. So get the claw in and it's time to just mix it through and it feels quite lovely. So just using your hand, bring this together until you kind of have a nice smoothish dough that can be turned out onto the board. So I'm going to set this aside, get rid of all the stuff that's now in my way. So just clear a little bit of space. Come on lads, get out of the way. And then turn out that wonderful dough. Give it a good sprinkle of flour and you just want to knead it now for a few minutes just until you get a smooth mixture that bounces back. Just knead this with the palm of your hand and after one or two minutes, you'll notice that if you flip it over and you press it down with your finger, it should bounce back. And it's that elasticity that you're really looking for before you set this out to rise. Once you've got the dough into a nice sausage shape, just like this, it's time to get this cut up. Now, the interesting method here is that I'm gonna cook this in a casserole pot. You get a really cool tear and share bread if you make it in something like this. So I've buttered the base of this and I'm gonna dust it with flour. And I'm gonna slice up my little sausage rolls basically into kind of 11 or 12 pieces and then roll them out, stick them in here and we're gonna bake them off. So let's slice up our little sausage rolls. One, two, three. Once you've sliced them up, it's time to take these little pieces of dough and shape them into nice rounds. And when you've rolled it around in circles like this, pushing with your palm, you should be left with a beautiful little dough ball. And now this goes into the casserole pot with the rest of them. So, this one needs to rise for about an hour just until it's doubled in size. And I do have one which has doubled in size. So come over and check this out because in here we have the most beautiful little, look at that. These wonderful little dough balls, they rise up together. The smell of that yeast and the potato is absolutely gorgeous. So to finish this off, all I'm gonna do is brush it with a little bit of milk over the top. And then we're gonna finish it off with that cheesy topping. So I have some good Irish cheddar, which I'm just gonna sprinkle over the top and then put this straight in the oven. 
Once you have each one of these dinner rolls completely covered in cheese, it's time to now get this into an oven preheated at 220 degrees Celsius and it cooks off for about 20 minutes just until they're nicely risen, beautifully golden and that cheese has melted. The smell in this kitchen right now is so good. You have to check out my wonderful potato yeast rolls, which should be ready right now. Yes, they are. Look at this. Jump in here and have a look. Wonderful brown on top. That cheese has melted. It's charred ever so slightly. It's possibly too hot for me to eat right now, so I'm going to leave it for a minute. But if you're looking for the recipe for this wonderful tear and share bread, it is in the box below over on my website. Make sure to check out our full St. Patrick's Day collaboration list, which is right over here. It's a lovely playlist filled with wonderful Irish recipes. Make sure to check out Sarah Lynn's fantastic recipe over on her website. And of course, comment, like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.